Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look at Leslie Charteris, famous for his Saint novels in vintage pan paperbacks. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. <laughs> Leslie Charteris was born Leslie Charles Boyer Yin in Singapore in 1907. Leslie became interested in writing at an early age. At one point, he created his own magazine with articles, short stories, poems, editorials, serials, and even a comic strip. In 1926, Leslie legally changed his surname to Charteris. In the BBC Radio 4 documentary Leslie Charteris, A Saintly Centennial, his daughter stated that he had selected the name from a telephone directory. Charteris wrote his first book during his first year at King's College in Cambridge. Once it was accepted, he left the university and embarked on a new career, motivated by a desire to be unconventional and to be financially well off by doing what he liked to do. He continued to write British thriller stories whilst working at various jobs, from shipping out on a freighter to working as a barman in a country inn. He prospected for gold, dived for pearls, worked in a tin mine and on a rubber plantation. He toured Britain with a carnival and even drove a bus. In Charteris's third novel, Meet the Tiger, which was published originally in Harback in 1928, this is when he introduced his most famous creation, Simon Templar, or The Saint. Um, however, in his 1980 introduction to a reprint by Charter Books, Charteris indicated he was dissatisfied with that work, suggesting its only value was as the start of the long-running Saint series. Occasionally, he chose to ignore the existence of Meet the Tiger altogether, and claimed that the Saint series actually began with the second volume, Enter the Saint, which was published in Harback in 1930. Charteris wrote a few other books, however. His life work, at least in the literary world, consisted primarily of Simon Templar's Saint Adventures, which were presented in novel, novella, and short story formats over the next 35 years. From 1963 onward, other authors ghost wrote the stories, whilst Charteris acted as an editor, approving stories and making revisions when needed. The Adventures of the Saint were chronicled in nearly 100 books, about 50 published in the UK and US, with others published in France. Charteris himself stepped away from writing the books after The Saint in the Sun, which was in 1963. The next year, Vendetta for the Saint was published, and while it was credited to Charteris, it was actually written by science fiction writer Harry Harrison. He later went on to create the Stainless Steel Rat series. Following Vendetta came a number of books adapting televised episodes. These were the Roger Moore TV series, and these were credited to Charteris, but were actually written by others, although Charteris did collaborate on several Saint books in the 1970s. Charteris appears to have served in an editorial capacity for these later volumes. He also edited and contributed to the Saint Mystery magazine, that was the Digest publication, with the final book in the Saint series was Salvage for the Saint, which was published in 1983. Charteris himself passed away in 1993. Right then, so the very earliest Saint books came quite early in Pan Books history, uh, starting with this one, which is Pan number 66. So yeah, these are very early ones. And let's put these in date perspective here, just so we know when this first one was out. So 1948. This is The Saint in New York. And you'll see this one's got a cover by Pollock. This one's actually signed. They are already using the the Saint logo there, like the sort of the stick man with the halo above his head. Various interpretations of what Simon Temper actually looks like throughout the years. I sort of liken his development almost to James Bond. Um, and you'll find in the sort of the 60s ones, maybe he's, he's looking a little thinner and a bit, a bit more like Roger Moore, but that's a, a little bit debatable. Um, but these uh, very early Pam books were, were two shillings. Now, I haven't quite got every single Saint book that was published by Pan um, in vintage form. And when I say vintage, we are looking at books pre-1970. And Pan themselves didn't actually publish them all. So they shared the publishing with Hodder and Stoughton. And a lot of Saint books came out as um, Hodder Yellow Jackets. Uh, but that's for perhaps another video. Um, but the ones that I am missing, and as I said, just a handful, I will pop pictures in just so you can see what every single cover looked like for the Pan Saint books, or Leslie Charteris books. So that's the first one then, uh, from 1948, The Saint in New York. 
Now, the next one, once again, numbered series, number 103. And this is the Avenging Saint, Knight Templar, in brackets. Um, and you'll notice that some of these are, in fact, I found this with saint books in general, is that when you tend to find them, they are not in the greatest of condition unless you're really lucky. And that's because the books got read and read and read. That's the only thing I can think of. A bit like the James Bond books, they were super popular, so they sold well. They had a lot of reprints as well, but also um, when you do find the copies, and these are all first editions or first thus with those covers, um, you do find them in slightly less than perfect condition. But it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm just happy to have copies of a lot of these. Now, this one, I admit, I've had a, a couple of copies of. So this was The Saint versus Scotland Yard, but it was originally published as The Holy Terror. Um, and this one's got um, a cover by Stein. And... This interpretation has the saint as uh, sort of slightly older. To me, it looks like an older sort of character. Still using the uh, the little saint emblem there, which should be famous with the series. Number 147 is The Saint Intervenes. This one once again has a jacket by Pollock. And this one's originally entitled Boodle. So that was the <laughs> that was the original name that Chartres gave this one. And it's good that the Pam books do give a little summary of what was uh, happening in this particular story. I think because Pam themselves did publish so many saint books, um, it makes me think that they must have been great sellers. And a lot of these have had reprints. Admittedly, I've not got many of the reprints, but um, they redid the jackets or touched up the jackets, altered them slightly uh, to keep the books looking fresh on the shelf. Um, number 171. And this is a Pollock cover again. So you're getting the sort of the uniformity with like the design of the same character there. Um, you'll notice the price has gone up to two shillings in the UK from one and six. Date wise, we're looking at 1951 now. So this is what's been published by Pan in the first few years uh, of publishing Saint Books. Nice, uh, bright, bold jacket that. And Pan certainly didn't shy away with uh, sort of use of primary colours, shall we say, to make their books pop, perhaps compared to some of the competition that was starting to uh, appear at the time. Um, they certainly were head and shoulders cover art-wise above, say, the more staid Penguin books. But there was a lot of other sort of garish publishers starting to uh, be published in the UK at this time. So they needed to stand out. So number 2A, then this is a slightly thinner one. Um, this was originally entitled The Misfortunes of Mr. Teal, but it's actually the more popular title ended up it being um, The Saint in London. Not so much a fan of these sort of vignette covers where they've just sort of got a bit of a cutout. I prefer the, like, the full cover artwork versions. Um, a nice jacket though, all the same. And uh, once again, a, a nice little use of the, the saint the saint emblem there so that's cool so i just um i'm gonna pop them over to that side now this is a really nice copy of this one so this is number 236 this is the brighter buccaneer and this is stories of the saints so this is one of the many uh, compilations of like short stories and this one in particular it says 15 short stories of simon templar known as the saint and um as you know, I'm a huge fan of, of the short story genre, as it were. I love all short stories, um, mainly because, you know, I don't really have the time to get stuck into a really thick book. I do like to dip in and out or read a, a shorter novel. Um, so short stories, if I wanted a, a quick saint fix, this would be perhaps one of the ones that I would pick up because it's full of, uh, well, in this case, 15 classic stories. Once again, using sort of the vignette cover um, and a slightly redesigned saint emblem there. It's a spine arm. So it's a quite a nice tight copy of this one. So I'm pleased to have this. And uh, yeah, 15, 15 saint stories in that one. Next, we've got number 254, which is Alias the Saint. And this is a bit better because the, um, the vignette's a little bigger. I'm just looking at that. And that appears to be Reginald Heed. So that's a, um, a Heed uh, signature there. He was very famous and uh, d did a lot of work for a book and pulp publishers around this time. He's prolific, but his work is highly collectible. And um, he's a great, great artist, great cover artist. So that's very, very nice with uh, pulling the curtain away to see the scene behind there. Excellent detail. Yeah, very, very nice, that one. 
And this particular one, this one's got three Saint Adventures pulled into one. So once again, they could have easily been three stories that have been pulled from a pulp magazine. The next one we've got is The Ace of Knaves. So this one just says A Saint book underneath. It's not quite as, as nice a cover as that last one there. Um, the Saint Emblem's a little bit thinner. Once again, quite a nice copy of that one. It's probably only been read, perhaps, the ones. And once again, Ace of Knaves is three stories, probably pulled from the digests, and made to form one complete sort of saint book. So there we are. So it's the, the Spanish War, the Unlicensed Victiculars, and the Beauty Specialist. And this one's got a little signature inside. This one's once owned by H.M. Robinson, whoever that was. Now the next one, number 317, is The Saint Goes West. So whether this was to try and tie in on the uh, what, the obvious Western boom that was happening in the uh, early 1950s, I'm not sure. In fact, it's worth noting, yeah, published 1955, you could say this is when there was a, a Western explosion with the new all the new series on TV. And this, this must have been to tie in with that. Once again... The Saint Goes West recounts three exploits of Simon Templer, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And that would explain that. So once again, three more, three more little Saint adventures. 348 is The Saint Overboard, or Saint Overboard here. This has got a very, very nice cover. I can't see. Oh, yes, I can. Just very, very small in the bottom there. Uh, Mortalman's. So he was the cover artist. He did a lot of work for Foursquare and a little bit for Pan. Um, really nice detail cover, almost like photographic with the sort of the ships in the background there. I do like the way they've added the little Saint emblem tumbling overboard there. Really, really nice, uh, nice jacket, that one. Yeah, very, very nice. Now, I think I'm just going to pause there and pull the camera out just a touch. OK, so number 361 in the pan numbered series is The Saint in Miami. Charteris himself did spend a lot of time in America, so I guess he knew the country quite well. This one um, signed Mortimer. So that's the first really, well, that's amongst the first of the really nice jackets, I would say, on this. Once again, the Saint, if that is the Saint, seems to have um, got a little bit younger there. <laughs> Maybe this was earlier adventures of the Saint. Um, yeah, finds the Saint in Miami finds Simon Templar in a holiday mood when he flies out to Florida in answer from a plea from Justine, a friend from... Um, uh, a previous adventure, that, and it's set in 1941. America is not yet involved in the war. So there you go. The Saint in Miami. This is nice. It's got, this was that period where Pam books uh, got quite glossy on their jackets, and uh, that's one of these. So when they're in fairly nice nick, they uh, those jackets really sort of pop. 386 then is Call for the Saint, and this is a quite a, quite a tatty old one. It's got lots of creases on, but... It's the best one I've ever come across in first edition. So that's why, for the time being, this is this is going to be in my collection until a better one comes my way. Um, uh, and a very, very nice jacket. Not sure if I can see who the artist is on that one. Oh, yes, I haven't yet Fox. So Fox is in the corner there. Yes, I'd love a nice, nice copy of that one. But there we are. Call for the Saint. And this is two adventures. Two Saint adventures for the Call for the Saint. Next one is number 403, and this is The Saint and Mr. Teal. This Mr. Teal character comes in quite a bit. This is another cover by Fox. Sadly, this one's missing the little corner just down there. But you have to think these books are, you know, 60, 70 or more years old now, some of these. And uh, they are admittedly a little bit fragile. And as I said at the start of this video, Saint books in general, when you find them, they rarely turn, these early ones rarely turn up in mint condition because they were read so much, read and reread, which is always a good sign, isn't it? 438 then. Now, this is the last one in the pan numbered series. So this is also the last one at two shillings. And this one's got a cover by Rex. And it's, it's a really, really nice jacket to boot. Absolutely love that one. Um, they've done something interesting there where they've got the saint steps in and they've got this sort of, they re jig the titles ever so slightly. Um, but very, very good. Even the little saint moniker there is putting the boot in to the, <laughs> to the bad guy. I think that's really good. That's a nice touch, that one. Gay, debonair, tough. The saint jumps into further adventures. 
And uh, just so we know when this last one came out, this was 1958. So this was the very last one in the pan, just number only series, which were one and six, and then they went up to, to two shillings. So as I'm sure pan fans know, um, after the numbered series, then came the great pans. And the reason these were G's or GP's was because the price had gone up to two and six rather than two shillings. So the first saint book as a G was this one, The Happy Highway Man, which is G123. And it says right there on the front, nine further adventures of the saint. So these have been pulled from short story collections and, and digests and things like that. And once again, a Rex Rex cover. You might recognise him. He, he did famously um, Live and Let Die for the Ian Fleming jacket, which is one of his most famous ones. So the Happy Highwayman, once again, a nice classic early saint book. And this first great pan was 1958. So that was G123. Okay, so the next one is G196, which is The Saint Steps In. Now, we've just seen that edition there, number 438 of The Saint Steps In, but this is a reissue as a great pan with a more expensive price and also a new jacket, so I'll pop that in now, but that's not one I've got. The next one is number 214, which is The Saint Plays With Fire. This is a beautiful, beautiful jacket on this one. Um, I cannot see... On first glance, who the cover artist might be, but my suspicion is Taylor. But it, 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 I can't see any signature, so it looks like it's unsigned. At least there's no obvious signor, signature on it that I could see. Um, so that's the Saint Plays with Fire. You see that the full write up of the story is now no longer there on the back. Um, you've got the little Saint logo there, it seems to be dancing in a circle, something like that. <laughs> So it's G214. Nice jacket, that one. Now, this is G217. So this is, once again, a reissue of one that we've already seen, which is the Saint to Mr. Teal. Don't forget, as I said earlier, um, Pan were sharing the publishing rights with Hodder. So they they really, I guess, needed to make the most of, of the list that they had. Um, Signature-wise, um, that is Hans Helwig. H. Helwig there. So that's who, who did that one. And that's The Saint and Mr. Teal. As a reissue, 217. So if, if we have a look inside. Um, yeah, this edition published 1957. But we'd already seen uh, um, this book as there, that number 403. So it is just a reissue. But the first with that number. So uh, pan collectors are going to want, want both editions, of course. Right, the next one we've got um, is Call for the Saint, which once again I'm missing. That was also another reissue. Then the next original one in Pan was number 294, G294, and it's The Saint's Getaway. The Saint almost meets his match. <laughs> very, very nice uh, cover, that one. I particularly like that one. Something a little bit different. Can't see any cover artist credited on that one for 294. Next is G358, which is The Saint Closes the Case. Another bullet paced Simon Templar thriller. Not such a detailed stick man there. Once again, no artist's signature, but my suspicion is this is also Hans Helwig. Just looking at the style of the uh, the artwork there. That was 358. Next one is number 438. The Saint Sees It Through, G438. The Saint in Mad Manhattan. Very, very nice copy of this one and uh, a lovely, nice tight copy. Um, once again, I can't, can't see any obvious signature on that one, but my suspicion would be Taylor. But I, I honestly don't know. There's no... No signature on that one. The Saint sees it through. 1961. So we are into the 60s now, around the time of the the Saint books. And obviously the Saint TV show. And all of those were published by Hodder as uh, TV tie-ins. So that was number 438. Um, then there was Follow the Saint, which is G480, which is one I, I don't actually own. Then the next one is G522, which is Saint Errant. And I do like this one because uh, I like the way they've used, just used the Saint logo and he's on the on the uh, the direction sign signpost there. 
when it comes to damsel, damsels in distress, the saint finds America somewhat crowded. So that's Saint Errant. Good stuff. That's a nice one. That five. So that was G522. Next is G581, which is the saint on the Spanish main. And they've just sort of dispensed with trying to visualize Templar by now. And uh, they're just using the actual saint logo. And they've sort of well, Spanishized him up with a little uh, sombrero and a, and a guitar there. Um, <laughs> Through packed cruise for a modern buccaneer. The saint takes a holiday. And that's G581. G615, and we are moving on quite a bit later now, is Enter the Saint, which is quite nice. And this is um, in keeping with a lot of the jackets around the time where they're more sort of objective and uh, they're not as beautiful as perhaps the, the heyday. In a trio of daredevil escapades that flash from the back streets of Soho to the mists of Dartmoor to a magnificent yacht on the sparkling Mediterranean. So this looks like three short stories, or three novellas, we should say, that have been pulled together into one. And this one, uh, 1963, yeah, there they are. There's the three books. And this one actually has a little introduction by Charteris himself. So that's quite nice, isn't it? And then retitled to put into book form is Enter the Saint. So it was G615. Next one is G642. This is The Saint Goes On. Yeah, this one, and probably the last one as well, was by W. Francis Phillips, the cover artist. He was very prolific for Pan at this time. He was in the process of reading all the Edgar Wallace covers. And this one, once again, looks like three three novellas pulled together, but without a, a new introduction. That was 642. Then there were a couple, there was just one more in the G series, which was G661, The Saint in Europe, which I haven't actually got. Then we move on to the X series. So these were three and six in price. And you had The Saint Around the World, X376. Then X398, The Saint Goes On. X436, The Saint on the Spanish Main. Then there was a reissue of Enter the Saint, which was X437. 459 was this one, which was Senor Saint, which is uh, this by this time they, they had moved into the sort of the photographic era of covers. And you see like a little hundred dollar bill, um, a playing card with um, an ace on, and then the Saint logo. Just to put these in date perspective, 1966 now. And this one's got four short stories that have been pulled together in the X series. As you see, there's three and six. So it was X459. Then you had X469, which was The Saint in Europe, which was a reissue. X613, which was Alias the Saint, which was another reissue. And the last one I've got pre-1970 is X742, which is the Avenging Saint. And this was, once again, this was another re-release, but with a brand new photographic jacket, as you can see, very, very nice. Um, using the uh, the Saint logo, the Saint emblem, I should say, logo emblem in the titles there, which is quite nice, but a photo cover. Three and six, and this very last one I've got, there we are, so. 1968, so published by Hodder and Stoughton uh, so, yeah, in 1930 as Knight Templar, um, then published in Pan all the way back in 1949. It had a few printings in the early 50s. Then came this edition in 1968, where it was reset with the new jacket, and that's, that's sort of why I've got it. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Leslie Charteris Saint books. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing for regular vintage paperback content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.